video is brought to you by Blessed Be God Boutique, maker of Catholic fashionable apparel, handmade accessories, and more. Just when we hoped we'd be done talking about World Youth Day, more news about the event has dropped. And it all points to the critiques leveled against World Youth Day in general by traditional Catholics being correct. Hot on the wheels of his interview that was published during World Youth Day, where Francis went on what can only be described as an unhinged rant about traditional Catholics and how he is apparently the victim of the Holy Spirit, Francis releases an open letter to the priests of Italy, but has since been making the rounds of Catholic media, meaning it's an open letter to the priests of the world as well. It pretty much a message to all priests, and in it he doubles down on his unhinged words against traditionalists, signaling that we may be in for another round of anti-traditionalist persecution coming from the very top of the institutional Catholic Church. At least if this kind of talk continues on pretty steadily, it's a general sign of more to come. And it all begs a question, how much more of this should we expect in the coming months? So let's dive into the story. Let's begin with a quick dig at traditional Catholicism here be presented in an article on the Vatican News website. Now, if you're not aware, Vatican News is the official news arm of Vatican City. Think NPR, BBC, CBC, but Vatican City version. And you kind of get the idea, including how impartial they're going to be on matters of state. So, from their article, quote, Commenting on over a million youths joining World Youth Day last week, the Pope remarked, They are religious. They are looking for a non-hostile, non-artificial, non-legalistic faith for an encounter with Jesus Christ, which is not easy, he said. Some may object that young people today don't always abide by moral rules. However, Pope Francis remarked, we all make mistakes in life, and despite this, the Lord is always waiting for us because he is merciful, end quote. Now, this stuff is part and parcel of his decade-long attacks on traditional Catholicism, which he has called artificial and legalistic repeatedly. That description of the faith of the church for nearly 2,000 years would be news to the saints and doctors of the church whom that artificial and legalistic faith provided the means for achieving sanctity. But then again, Francis obviously knows better than anyone else what the kids want today. But let's take a look at that letter that Francis issued to priests in Italy. It's going to set the stage for something that happened at World Youth Day. And remember, that letter is not only to the priests of Italy, but now it's to the priests of the world. And I want to thank the Twitter account Catholic Sat for posting this quote from it, which brought the letter to everyone's attention. Quote, these are things that I have mentioned on other occasions, but allow me to reiterate them, considering them priorities. Spiritual worldliness, in fact, is dangerous because it is a way of life that reduces spirituality to appearance. It leads us to be workers of the spirit, men clad of sacred forms that actually continue to think and act according to the fashions of the world. This happens when we allow ourselves to be fascinated by the seductions of the ephemeral, by mediocrity and routine by the temptations of power and social influence, and again from vainglory and narcissism, from doctrinal intransigence and liturgical aestheticism, forms and ways in which worldliness hides behind appearances of religiosity and even of love for the church, but in reality consists in seeking, instead of the glory of the Lord, human glory and personal well-being. How can we fail to recognize in all of this the updated version of that hypocritical formalism which Jesus saw in certain religious authorities of the time and which in the course of his public life made him suffer perhaps more than anything else, end quote. All of that, strictly speaking, is true. Where the logic falls apart is claiming that is part and parcel of what traditional priests do, which is who he is talking about here. We are talking about priests who offer the form of mass that all too many Catholics don't understand anymore and refuse to understand. And I'm not talking about those of you who would love to attend the traditional liturgy if you had one reasonably close, but for whatever reason can't go. I'm talking about the ones who are horrified by the idea of a priest not facing them in the Mass, who offer worship in Latin and Greek and not in whatever vernacular tongue they speak. I'm talking about the Catholics who are like that. See, that logic falls apart because those priests offer a form of the liturgy that the world is overtly hostile to, a form that the world is so hostile to that the parishes that offer it in the United States get vis visits from the agents of Big Brother to snoop in on in order to make sure that the worshippers aren't engaging in extreme forms of scheming. That's what we're talking about here. Those priests are apparently worldly and only seeking status. 
It's so laughable. If you've ever met one of these priests, you know that that's just on its face nonsense. Now we can compare this hate of holy traditional priests with, well, this. You may have seen this image or images of this priest hosting a DJ rave at World Youth Day right before the offering of the Mass. Look carefully and you'll see a tabernacle behind him. And yes, that is a fully vested bishop standing next to him, waiting to offer the Mass. It used to be that Catholics prayed silently or offered the Holy Rosary before the Mass. Silence is key to preparing your mind for the Mass. But in the new religion, DJ dance parties are how you prepare for the Mass, apparently. This priest, Father Guilherme Piazzo Piazzotto, has openly mocked traditional priests in a paid advertisement he did for an online betting website. Yes, a priest advertising for gambling. You can't make this stuff up. A viewer sent this article to me, and honestly, I, I don't know how much lower the modernists can go. The story comes from Kath Khan, and it begins by paraphrasing the priest who opens the ad in question dressed as a traditional priest, complete wearing the black hat you frequently see, and mockingly telling people to use moderation and caution on the website in question. Then we get this, quote, In a video he made on his Instagram page, the priest from Pavoyad, Dave Adazim clarifies that the money obtained by the recording the, for the ad for the online casino will fully be divided between the parishes of Laundos and Amorim, a proposal accepted by the brand. Contacted by J.N., Canon Jose Paulo Abreu, vicar general of the Diocese of Braga, declined to comment on the advertisement, referring only that, quote, not all means justify the ends. According to the same publication, the advertisement is not being well seen within the Diocese of Braga. No kidding, which understands that gambling is an addiction. You who are involved in these games, you already know. Play responsibly, in moderation, light candles, and judge, says Father Gilhame in the ad. Saturday, November 9th, what could have been a simple trip to the Vatican became a unique moment for Gilhame Piexo, priest from Laundos and Pavoya de Varzum, when meeting with Pope Francis, the priest asked him to bless him with an indispensable object in his life, since he is also a DJ. The headphones he uses when playing music. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> In a publication on Facebook, Father Gilherme Piezotto showed a photograph of the meeting, once-in-a-lifetime encounters, a meeting that offered the Our Day Rock t-shirt <laughs> to the Holy Father and also asked for a blessing for the headphones used to play music, he wrote. At the end, Pope Francis's usual request, pray for me. What beautiful moments these remain forever. In another publication, the priest refers that R. de Rock Laundos is the most typical parish space in the world. On the Facebook page of this space, it is mentioned that everything started in 2006, this place being the meeting point of the parish of St. Miguel de Laundos. It is not a cafe, it is not a bar, it is not a club. It is much more than a physical place. It is a spirit aimed at coexistence between generations, at family gatherings where Everyone is expected to feel at home and be able to live together without prejudice or age restrictions. It can be read. The space where parish events take place opens only occasionally, and it is there that Father Gilhame also plays music, meaning he does DJ dance parties in his parish. Regarding the headphones, a priest reveals he began by referring to the Holy Father his quote, passion for choral music and electronic music, having the audacity to ask Pope Francis for a blessing for the headphones, a request that he acceded with good disposition. There are no words that can describe this emotion and gratitude, he concluded. End quote. So this DJ party in front of the tabernacle happened with Francis's full blessing. Look, I've said this again and again. I honestly don't care what kind of music you like as long as you carefully discern what it is you're listening to. I'm not one of these traditionalists who tells you to only listen to Gregorian chant and everything you do in life that might require music. Just don't bring it to mass or formal church events, please, I beg you. I even say the same thing to priests. In fact, I especially say it to priests, considering the potential for causing scandal. In the case of this priest, look at the scandal caused by his behavior at World Youth Day, which has now been exposed as having been part of a larger pattern of behavior unbecoming a priest. And what has the diocese said in response? The ends don't always justify the means? Great. Thanks for the strong words there from the bishop, I, I guess. It's a little wonder that fewer and fewer people, especially young people, attend Mass anymore, with priests like this making a mockery of the faith on the biggest Catholic stage in the world. 
I want to go back to that letter, Francis, though. The quote I gave you earlier from him, of spiritual worldliness and the rest, that would be true if he were talking about priests like this one instead of traditional priests. He's following it with this. If Francis were aiming his words at those priests making a mockery of the faith like this DJ priest, I'd be quite happy with this letter. Listen to what he says here as a way of warning to worldly priests. Quote, Spiritual worldliness is a gentle temptation, and for this reason even more insidious, for it creeps in knowing how to hide well behind good appearances, even with religious motives. And even if we recognize it and turn it away from us, sooner or later it shows up again, disguised in some other way. As Jesus said in the Gospel, when the unclean spirit comes out of a man, it wanders through deserted places seeking relief and not finding any. It says, I will return to my house from which I came out. Having come, he finds it swept and adorned. Then he goes, takes seven other spirits, worse than himself, enters it and takes up residence there. And the last condition of that man becomes worse than the first. See the Gospel of Luke chapter 11, verses 24 to 26. We need inner vigilance, guarding the mind and heart, nurturing in us the purifying fire of the spirit because worldly temptations return and knock in a polite way. They are the polite demons. They enter politely without my noticing. See the address to the Roman carrier from December 22nd of last year. End quote. Worldly temptations return and knock in a polite way. Like, I don't know, for example, donating the pay you get for advertising for the most insidious form of betting to charity because the ends apparently don't do justify the means for this priest. But no, Francis wasn't talking about this priest or priests like him. He was talking about traditional priests once again because of the his digs at aestheticism, meaning think love of beauty. And I'll end with by mentioning this. He continues by going off on clericalism because those bad priests of his claim to be separated from the flock higher than the rest. Thing is, what he's attacking is the idea that priests should be holy. Holiness means being separated from the rest and dedicated to God. That is actually what holiness means, to be literally separated from the rest of the world for the sole purpose of doing God's work. Here's Francis' thoughts on holy priests. Quote, I would like to dwell, however, on one aspect of this worldliness. It, when it enters the hearts of pastors, takes a specific form, that of clericalism. Excuse me for repeating it, but as priests, I think you understand me. Because you too share what you believe in a heartfelt way. According to that beautiful, typically Roman, Romanesque, trait, whereby sincerity of the lips comes from the heart, and tastes of the heart. And I, as an elderly man and from the heart, feel I can tell you that it worries me when we fall back into the forms of clericalism, when, perhaps without realizing it, we give people to see that we are superior, privileged, placed on high, and therefore separated from the rest of God's holy people. As a good priest once wrote to me, clericalism is a symptom of a priestly and lay life tempted to live in the role, and not in the real bond with God and the brethren. In short, it denotes a disease that causes us to lose the memory of the baptism we have received, leaving in the background our belonging for the same holy people and leading us to live authority in the various forms of power, no longer noticing duplicity without humility, but with detached and haughty attitudes. End quote. Holiness is a disease, apparently. That's the man the world thinks is Pope, in a nutshell. Pray for him. He clearly needs it. But what do you think about this? If this story made you angry or sorrowful, remember to pray for your good holy priest. They need your prayers, especially when the alleged vicar of Christ is smearing good priests like this while blessing the work of depraved priests like the DJ priest who thought offering a DJ dance party a rave in front of a tabernacle was a good idea right before Mass, right in front of his bishop. But I'm curious what you thought about this, so let me know in the comments, please. And like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to sharing this on social media. That helps, too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.